the thought for the day is from uh, Dr. Walter Brueggemann, a uh, UCC theologian, uh, an Old Testament scholar, prolific writer. Anyway, his thought is, what a stunning vocation for the church to stand free and hope-filled in a world gone fearful and to think, imagine, dream, vision a future that God will yet enact. Think about that. God is still with us. Gracious God, God, make us an instrument of your grace. grace. Weave us us into a community, showing forth your your power and tenderness. 
Bless, Bless us in our differences, differences and, and undergird our courage, courage to stand together. together. We, we call, call on you today to gather us in courage. your love. Lead us to better know you, know you and glorify, glorify you, you on, on each step of the journey, journey of our lives. In, in the name, name of Jesus, Jesus let us now keep, keep silence and breathe in the love of God. God. Amen. I remind you that uh, prayer is conversation of the heart with God and with one another. You notice the word conversation. It also means that we just don't come to God with our words, but we also need to be open to God's Spirit coming to us and leading us and directing us. So the prayer this morning, I hope that you will be in conversation with God and with one another and also praying for one another. So let us be together in prayer now. We do sing, O God, love divine, all loves excelling, joy of heaven on earth be found. Loving and gracious God, still speaking, still patient with us. You are still generous with gifts and graces to us, and we have come here to worship to see ourselves more clearly. In the epistle lesson for this morning, we read about Paul telling us that we see in a mirror. We see our reflections dimly, and yet we see ourselves as we really are. Someone once prayed, we need a mirror for our souls. We need a yardstick to measure our deeds. We need a judge to review our cause. We need an evaluator to look at our lives. Ever-present God, your word does all of this for us. Sometimes love is fate. We are selfish in spirit. We deceive ourselves by our narrow vision of what you have for us. Guide us to be caring and compassionate people. Help us to serve one another with sensitivity. Oh God, open those channels where we can find forgiveness and transformation. God, we make too many excuses and do not have enough self-awareness. We blame the past, others, circumstances, or our temperament. But it is your word that reminds us that we make choices. We are free to choose how we respond to you and life itself. God, grant us wisdom and understanding to live life whole and holy. It is your love in which we find forgiveness. It is your grace in which we find newness of life. It is your mercy in which we can begin anew again and again. It is your spirit that gives us faith, hope, and love. God, known as love, you know our past and you, you still love us with an embrace that brings comfort and strength in all our needs. Help us to love others, that we will listen to what is past, accept the present for what it is, and how it can be your blessing of vitality, a show of faith into the future. Make us instruments of healing and hope that come from genuine concern, rejoicing with those who rejoice, weeping with those who weep. We lift up prayers for those who are ill of mind, body, and spirit. We have a list, O oh God, but we also bring our concerns for one another and for ourselves. 
be with those who are grieving, especially the Gundrum family, those in despair, those without purpose in life. But we also pray, and we can give thanks for the celebrations of life, for family, for friends, for work, for leisure, acts of kindness given to us, and for the fellowship that is called the body of Christ, for this congregation, St. John's United Church of Christ. As Paul writes, now faith, hope, love, abide, and remain these three things. And the greatest of these is love. O oh God, we have brought to you our spoken words. But now hear us as we bring our thoughts, our meditations, our personal concerns. May we be in conversation with God and with one another in this moment of silent prayer. Let us join together now in a prayer that Jesus has taught us to pray. And this morning we are going to use the words and forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Join me in prayer. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen.
today's scripture is Psalm 71. Let us read responsively. I've taken refuge in you, Lord. Don't let me ever be put to shame. Deliver me and rescue me by your righteousness. Bend, Bend your, your ear toward me and save me. Be my rock of refuge where I can always escape. You commanded, you commanded me that my life, my life be saved, saved because, because you are my rock and my, and my fortress. <laughs> my rescue me from the power of the wicked. Rescue me from the grip of the wrongdoer and the oppressor, because you are my hope, Lord. You, you Lord, are the one, one I've, I've trusted, trusted since childhood. childhood. I've depended on you from birth. You cut the cord when I was when I came from my mother's womb. My, my praise, praise is, is always, always about, about you. Here ends the reading. May God grant to us wisdom to understand. <laughs> read the epistle lesson, a very familiar portion of scripture that we've heard often. Hear these words. Taken from 1 Corinthians 13, Paul's first letter to the Corinthians. If I speak in tongues of mortals and of angels but do not have love, I am a noisy gong or a clanging cymbal. But do you not have love? If I have prophetic powers and understand all mysteries and all knowledge, and if I have all faith so as to remove mountains but do not have love, I am nothing. If I give away all my possessions and if I hand over my body so that I may boast but do not have love, I gain nothing. Love is patient. Love is kind. Love is not envious or boastful or arrogant or rude. It does not insist on its own way. It is not irritable or resentful. It does not rejoice in wrongdoing, but rejoices in the truth. It bears all things, believes all things, hopes all things, 
endures all things. Love never ends. But as for prophecies, they will come to an end. As for tongues, they will cease. As for knowledge, it will come to an end. For we know only in part and we prophesy only in part. But when the complete comes, the partial will come to an end. When I was a child, I spoke like a child. I thought like a child. I reasoned like a child. When I became an adult, I put an end to childish ways. For now we see in a mirror dimly, but then we will see face to face. Now I know only in part that I will know fully, even as I have been fully known. And now faith, hope, and love abide, these three, and the greatest of these is love. This is the holy word of God. And I would also like to read to the, today's gospel lesson for our, the lectionary is taken from Luke 4, verses 21 through 30. Then Jesus began to say to them, Today this scripture has been fulfilled in your hearing. All spoke well of Jesus and were amazed at the gracious words that came from his mouth. They said, Is this not Joseph's son? He said to them, Doubtless you will quote to me this proverb, Doctor, cure yourself. And you will say, Do hear also in your hometown the things that you have heard you did at Capernaum. And he said, Truly I tell you, no prophet is accepted in the prophet's hometown. But the truth is, there were many widows in Israel in the time of Elijah, when the heaven was shut up three years and six months, and there was a severe famine in all the land. Yet Elijah was sent to none of them except to a widow at Seraphath in Sidon. There were also many lepers in Israel at the time of the prophet Elisha, and none of them were cleansed except Naaman the Syrian. When they heard this, all in the synagogue were filled with rage. They got up, drove Jesus out of town, and led him to the brow of the hill in which the town was built, so that they might hurt him, uh, hurl him off the cliff. But he passed through the midst of them and went on his way. May God add blessing upon the reading, the hearing, the discerning, and the guidance and applications of our scripture lessons and God's words into our lives. Please pray with me. Still speaking, God whose word became flesh in Jesus. Look upon us with the compassion of a wise parent. As St. Paul reminds us, may we through our love listen, hear, and speak in ways that are patient and kind. May we bear, believe, hope, and endure in ways that love is lived through us and the world will hear good news, give up childish ways, and respond in generosity and extravagant welcome. So may the words of my mouth, the meditations of our hearts, be holy and acceptable, reflective and acceptable to your love, made known in Jesus Christ. Amen. May the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, the fellowship and communion of the Holy Spirit be with us as it was in the beginning, is now, and shall be forevermore. Amen. It really is a privilege to be with you again and to be here at this service. Thank you for the wonderful music that is shared with us. Good accompanist, good choir, good people singing. So thank you all. You know, it's time for us to come together with our prayers, with our conversation, it, and with having fellowship and concern for one another. That is why we come together. But I also bring you, again, greetings from your sisters and brothers of Northwest Ohio Association of the Heartland Conference, the United Church of Christ, and also of the World Family of Faith. We keep you in our thoughts and prayers during this time of transition. 
I also ask you to pray for God's Holy Spirit to bring clarity to your future as you witness to God's amazing grace and for the missions and ministries you do here and around the world. You know, God has blessed you to be blessings to others. And the, you have blessed others with your gifts and graces that you have received in abundance. It is when you share your gifts and graces that people's lives are changed so that peace and justice will become a way from God in our lives. So I thank you again and again for your care and love for one another and for the care that you have for God's world. This morning's lectionary readings remind us that calls each one of us to be witnesses as people who have been transformed by God's forgiveness for, of God's love and God's embraces us and never abandons us. That's our faith. Psalm 71 reminds us how God cares for us, rescues us, and is a refuge in time of pain and suffering. We spend a lot of time, don't we, and a lot of energy, money and on our bodies. And then we also spend so much on how to be more knowledgeable. However, we are called to seek God's guidance for our spiritual well-being and to be open to God's leading. An important question for all of us to answer this morning is, is it well with our souls? Do you have a right relationship to God, to love God with our entire being, and love our neighbors as we would expect to be loved ourselves? God's future is always before us. Notice it's not our future, it's God's future. And we need to pray and discern what God has for us. Again, it is not our future, but God's future. It is God's hope that will enable us to overcome our fears. It is God's love that will help us overcome all the hatreds of life and what is inside of us. Every day, every moment, we are called to be stewards of God's blessing because God blesses us so abundantly. As Christians, we are to be Christ-like, Christ-centered, and christ vision. Remember, it is Christ's church of love, compassion, extravagant welcome, hope, caring, forgiveness, new beginnings over and over again. In other words, God has blessed us abundantly. So it is Jesus Christ who sets us the example for us. And if we are serious about our Christian commitment, we follow Jesus in ways that we live life to its fullest. As I looked at today's gospel from Luke, we read about Jesus traveling to neighboring towns where he was preaching, teaching, and performing many miracles, and then he returns to his hometown, Nazareth. Luke records, And he went to the synagogue as his custom was, on the Sabbath day. Many would think that worship is neither necessary or important. Whether in person or via the internet, worship is to praise God as we join others in a fellowship of believers wherever we are. St. John's Church faith community members are needed to discern and decide the direction of this church that it's going to have for its future. What is call God calling you to be as a congregation? What is God calling you as individuals? What are the priorities to be accomplished in the near future? 
what part will you play in to accomplish these things in the life of this church to know God's vision here and throughout the world? Jesus' example and customs were not merely to worship in the synagogue to be seen by others, but to affirm over and over again that relationships are established by faith, hope, and love with one another and with God. Jesus, the one who was without sin and was in complete harmony with God, it would seem that he does not need to be part of a worshiping community. Yet Jesus needed the community of faith to do his deeds of mercy and transformation. We are called to be transformed and have an, our outlook on life as viewed through the eyes of Jesus. Someone wrote, quote, God touches our mouths and bids us speak. God sends us forth to build and to plant. We put our trust in God day by day and commit ourselves to lives of praise. Be patient and kind, full of trust and hope, for God is eager to show love through you. End of quote. In Jesus, we find the clue to ministry. Jesus had begun his ministry and was returning to his hometown. Luke writes, all the people spoke well of him and were amazed at the gracious words that came from his mouth. Soon, however, the crowd began to murmur and even became filled with rage for Jesus' words were challenging. They thought, what nerve Jesus had to tell them that it was not well with their relationship with God. Is this not Joseph's son, they thought? Rage or anger prevents us from being transformed into ves vessels of love, compassion, peace, justice, and forgiveness. Jesus' ministry was a call to love. And he called others to love as God loved them. It is appropriate that the call to ministry is to love. You hear that? The call to ministry is to love. How many times have you thought of worship, ministry, faith, and living as forms of love? We've all read Paul's great words on love from the first letter to the Corinthians in chapter 13. We are awed by its beauty, its logical judgment, its simplicity, and yet perplexed by its depth of meaning and challenge. There is a certain lit literary grace and rhythm to it when we read it. I remember hearing someone state that he was content just to listen to its words to let its words and images fall on his ears and heart. And in just reading then, he was not challenged to do ministry. There is something amazing about analyzing it that soon leads us to feeling uncomfortable and uneasy. The Apostle Paul exclaims, Love is the most excellent way. Paul does far more than simply list love as one of the special gifts of God. The Apostle Paul claims that love is the more excellent way. Without love, he insists, the other special gifts of God, even the higher ones, he writes, are nothing. And certainly not the gifts of speech and of knowledge and even of generosity or even martyrdom. One can give everything they have, you know, to shelter the homeless, to feed the poor. But unless it is motivated by love, it is trash. Even of the three that abide and remain, faith, hope, and love, it is love, Paul insists, that is the greatest. Don't you wonder why? What is it that makes love so excellent? 
what it it what makes it love so much that it is more excellent than others one theologian has speculated and suggested that a faith hope and love only love is shared specifically between people faith and hope deal only with god and love has infinite external duties to people with God's leading. Think about that. All the gifts mentioned by Paul are gifts used by people for people. And it is only when love is added to them that they make sense. Paul also insists that only love remains and outlasts everything else. Think about all the gifts Paul includes in this passage except faith and hope. Each and every one of them will come to an end. You know, prophecy will pass away. Tongues will cease. Knowledge will pass away. In our lives, we have other examples for injury, illness. Age can dull our tongues, our wits, and our perspectives but they cannot diminish our love. Robbed of every other gift, it is still possible to have love. Love continues when all those other gifts come to an end. Finally, the question becomes, and what is love's power? What enables love to last forever? Simply put, love is of God. Love is the way that God acts. It is God who, in the, who is patient and kind. It is God who is not arrogant or rude. It is God who is not irritable or resentful. It is God who bears, believes, hopes, and endures all things. Is it no wonder then that when Jesus closed the book, the congregation had never heard the word spoken in such a manner, for Jesus spoke with authority and with love from God. Good news, he said. Release, recovery, liberty, and the proclamation come to us from God who loves us and sustains us. Love is the way that God acts. Love bears and shares in the life of God. Love will never end because the Christ in whom God's love is most clearly enacted will live and rule forever. Let Christ be the welcome guest among us always. For when we have God's word, God's love will be known in us and through us. So here... And live that power of God's love. In summary of our scripture today, quote, Our faith is nothing without love, and our good deeds are empty without God. God is our rock and our fortress, the source and fulfillment of our lives. Now faith, hope, love abide these three. But the greatest is love. Oh God, may we know that you are with us now and forevermore. In your love, we have graciousness and life to its fullest. This we pray through your precious name. Amen. Christ who died.
died on Calvary, for He washed my sins away. He put within my heart a melody, and I know it's there to stay. In my heart there rings a melody, there rings a melody with heaven's harmony. In my heart there rings a melody, there rings a melody of love. now accept the gifts of your tithes and offerings let us dedicate those offerings would you join me in the prayer of dedication accept these offerings now placed on your altar O God the giver of every good and perfect gift grant that they may be symbols of our love and of ourselves now offered more fully to you use these gifts in us we pray to the end that your realm may come and will be done on earth, even as it is done in heaven. Through Jesus Christ, our Savior. Amen. forth into the world in peace be of good courage hold fast to that which is good render to no one evil for evil support the weak help the afflicted honor all people love and serve the Lord rejoicing in the power of the Holy Spirit now may you love God so much that you love nothing else too much and may you have fear enough that you fear nothing else because God is with you with love. God be with you always. Amen.
go out to share the good news. Now we go out to share your love. Now we go out to share the good news. Now we go out to share your love. Carry the light. Carry the light. Carry the light to all. Carry the light. Carry the light. Carry the light.